games because there's uh, so many out there is this uh, e-game. It's available on OS4 Depot. Uh, I can click here and see the games that I've done in years past, which is actually very helpful. So I don't have too much uh, overlap year to year. And then that was last year's games. And then this is this year's games. So a couple of uh, selections. All of these are either available in demo form or open source. Um, a couple of them are, um, uh, all these games were released uh, this year. I was just thinking about the sound from the computer. There's not a lot of sound with these guys, so I don't have that turned on. So the first one we're going to start with is a, a little puzzle game. I think it was written in Hollywood. Um, Hollywood games are getting better, harder to tell where they come from. It's great. So I'm hit start. And it, it's, a, it's an interesting game, great for kids who are probably four or five years old using a computer, or uh, folks that like the old school um, games. Uh, so this application takes a bunch of games and goes through and allows you to choose which one you want to turn into a puzzle. So we'll do uh, Monkey Island on this side. Oops. Oh, those are both Monkey Islands. I don't know what this one is. Like Indiana or something, some monkey island. And now you choose the other side, and we'll do the, the lemmings over here, the, these ninja lemmings. And you press right click to continue. And what it does is it mixes them up between each other, and you have to reassemble the puzzle on both sides of the, the image. So you'll notice that there's some lemming shots over here, and there's some uh, uh, other shots over here. I've actually not successfully completed it, so I don't know how it scores. <laughs> um, but uh, it's uh, a fun little puzzle game that was uh, available on OS4 Depot, so I decided to grab it to uh, give it a try for this year's uh, show. Well, that's definitely wrong. So that one goes here. But this guy goes here. And then notice they jump around, so you really got to pay attention, especially on a large uh, screen. Oh, it's pretty good. So it's a fun little game, great little time waster. I, I think one of the, the, the best elements of it is the fact that the designer decided to take um, games that were um, things that we, we know and love from, the, from our childhoods and whatnot. Um, and put it together in this cute little uh, puzzle form factor. Nice of them to uh, to do for us. And you got to remember, you got to jump back and forth on both sides to get all of the images. For I've been doing a lot of puzzles with my son recently. So I've been training for uh, today's uh, session here. So it's actually fairly challenging. <laughs> okay. Um, this one is called Two Pick Puzzle, and it's on uh, OS4 Depot. And uh, it doesn't even have a right mouse button, so I apologize to the author for not having the name on, on uh, the top of my head. But it's a, a fairly challenging uh, puzzle game out there, because you, you have to do a lot of different things to uh, make it right. Okay, I'm, it's actually kind of fun. I'm going to stop. I hope I do that for a while. I wanted to bring in some more classic games, so uh, my original thought was to set up an Amiga 1200 and, and run, because actually there's been a fair amount of classic activity in the, in the Amiga gaming scene. I'd say it almost is, we're seeing more and more classic titles coming out. There's a new uh, AGA game in development that's been announced on the forums on the Amiga, um, Amiga World or Amiga.org. I found that there was a recent update of uh, ADOM. Now, these are a class of game kind of called Rogue, if you remember from the way, way back days. Um, they are fascinating. So this particular one, you'll notice the copyright was 1994 to 2015. It was actually, I guess they needed to update that because this was released this year. Uh, this is the Ancient Domains of Mystery, released 60. Um, these games are particularly vile because they're so hard. They're so hard. Um, I, I played 
I was playing with it a little bit to prepare, and uh, it's the sort of thing that if you really want to do this, you've got to spend a lot of time. There's so much to these very simple graphics, very simple text, but they have very, very rich storylines. So we'll go ahead and generate a new character. Um, we were born in the month of Cup on the day 11. This is all completely automatic generated. Um, we collect knowledge, experience, and camaraderie, game effects, whatever, for space bar. Do um, you want to create a specific character type, or do you want fate to decide? Let's let fate decide. Let's be random. Uh, you're born as a male mist elf. Awesome. Um, reading the last couple, uh, at the age of 8,754, you end your apprenticeship. I suppose I'm a little slow. <laughs> you are now fully learned bard. Perfect. I love bards. Okay. Uh, random, of course. Let's see, choose a talent. Where's the random button? Uh, affinity with axes, boomerang. So it's very much like the Dungeons, Dragons, Lord of the Rings type thing. Uh, as a bard, we would probably use the worst possible selection. So let's do whips, few from the audience. And a talent, another talent, pull arms. Those are fun. And then, uh, how about uh, rocks and clubs? What's our name? We are Amulet. Okay. So, now we're actually starting the game. So this is a, a, 68, a 68K Amiga 3.1 compiled game from Aminet. Um, this is not the, uh, the uh, OS 4 version. This is actually the Amiga OS 020 version. Um, you'll notice that there's a little at symbol in the corner there. Do we want to leave the chain? No, I don't know what that means. Um, and notice the graphics, there's like a little uh, carrot that's gray, that's a mountain. So if I try to um, move into it, it says an unassuming cave entry. I can't go up, pressing the up arrow, because you need special equipment. So we can wander out of the mountain chain. The green stuff are actually trees. So they take colors and ASCII characters to create a very rich and exciting world. Uh, this is the tiny hamlet. Uh, oh, that's inventory. Let's see, escape gets us back. Uh, inventory. Let's see, how do we get into the town? Examine as E. Move to the t uh, one. Oh, we're in the forest. Oh, that was examined. Notice the, the underbar. So you can actually look at parts of the map and see that this is a, a, a we recall it was an unassuming cave entry. Because I imagine there's a randomization, you might forget what it was, because that's the kind of game this is. Let's see, how do I go in again? I'm sure people who know these games are screaming at me online, saying, you pressed this button. Uh, move stairs, D, D. Oh. Not, <laughs> not while in the wilderness. Sorry, guys. I did this a little while back. Character information. Designing. You just gotta, if, if you play it enough, you get used to all the keys and you can just zip through this stuff. Maybe, no. Not you. Filter. What the heck is it? Oh, getting over you. Yeah. No, no. Ah! Move and walk, inventory stairs, environment, no. Religion, interact, pay, pay. No, that's not, you know what it is, I gotta press um, uh, E on the help. Uh, open door, ah, enter, enter, carrot. Okay, now we're in the hamlet. <laughs> So you enter the hamlet, primitive cottages, a shop, a village hall, and notice the D is sort of moving on its own, kind of following us. That's a dog, by the way, D, dog, if I press E, uh, the dog's going to kind of chase us around, it's not going to try to kill us. The other letters that are moving by themselves, those are char like characters in the environment, so like T is a person, I think. So, 
Uh, oh, my ears are quite clean. I don't know what I press. Okay. Interact. Okay. C for chat. Chat with monster. Yeah, they're probably monsters. Oh, the little T's are children, apparently. <laughs> oh, do we really want to attack no. burp the baby water dragon? No. And here's a door. And you can open and close doors. Notice the dog is still following me. Uh, no, we don't want to leave the village yet. Is there any way to make this bigger? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, that, that's, that's not true. Most of these have, the more advanced ones, and this probably has it too, you can go in and uh, change the tile sets. So people have written very elaborate tile sets that are graphical for certain versions of the games. Um, what, what, what's, the, what's the, Rogue is one of them, NetHack is the same thing. Uh, Moria, the Mines of Moria, exactly. I, I promise I was better at this before. <laughs> yes, I do want to dive into the water without knowing how to swim. Oh, there's another at symbol. I wonder what that does. So let's go get ourselves killed in the dungeon. The mist wolf follows you. Okay. It was a mist wolf that was with us. So we're wandering around. Oh, an outlaw settlement. Oh, and we have our mist wolf that we picked up randomly. A mugger, you hit the mugger and moderately wound him. I miss the, oh, the wolf is attacking the mugger. I might want to save this. The mugger is on my, is on my side. Severely wound him. You hit the mugger. I'm saying everything for her. The mugger misses you. Woohoo, we actually slayed the mugger. But our, I think our wolf died too. No, let's leave this town. Let's go find something really dangerous. Oh, and it like auto. Ooh. Wild dogs. Uh, let's go to the cave. I don't get away. Ooh, this looks bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have any weapons. Oh, guess I no. I have a mythical sword sword. Nice. I guess last time I didn't. I didn't uh, do that right. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, so I just use the left right arrow and it just automatically attacks. You don't have to use the F key? No. Okay, cool. Um, so one of these is probably hit points down here. Down here, so we have seven hit points left. So this is probably going to go very badly. <laughs> and, and we're down to one, and there's more dogs coming. Oh, negative two. We're bleeding. And we die. <laughs> this is about as far as I've ever gotten. <laughs> It, the, the, the more you play it, the better you get at it, the more you die later, and the more frustrated you are. Yeah, and it'll, it'll completely automatically uh, generate everything. So that's the first one of these. There's another one we'll play with. Okay, uh, Z, uh, quit the game. Okay, so now we're going to run GMAP. Ah, this one is a game maker game. That's what it was. Hopefully this all works for us. Ooh, that could be a little bit of a problem. My uh, device that down samples the HDMI was having troubles with this. Okay, seems to be working. Um, sadly, I didn't actually figure out how to start this. I probably shouldn't show it because of that. So this is actually a system called Game Maker. So this is a Game Maker game published, I think it's Ghosts and Goblins like, and uh, you run it with the Game Maker engine. There are other Game Maker games that hopefully we'll see uh, available to us in the future. So pressing the space bar brings the sword down from the top, and then it does stuff. And I'm trying to remember what the buttons were to get started. Yeah. I might need a joystick for this guy. I came across it on the forums and uh, forgot that I hadn't learned how to play it. Oh man. No, no, this is a hardcore game. Um, what's going on here? I'm back here. How do I start this guy? I also think it's in French. Because. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I need a joystick to play this one. I got ahead of myself here. I don't know. Oh, it's a little unhappy. Yeah, seriously. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. That's on me. I'm sure the game is great. That's how you fix that. Okay. I was hoping it'd be a little bit easier to, to get into it. Um, I forgot to read the directions for that, all the other preparation. Uh oh. Oh man. Slides beta coming real soon. So the idea with that game is it's the, the thing about that that's more interesting is it's not a port of a game, it's a port of a game engine of which there are other games, and that was the, the main one. Um, I think it had been done a while back, the author stopped, and then they picked it up again. If you go to the forums on the online things like uh, Ami, uh, Amiga World or oh, uh, 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 Amiga.org, Amigans, well, there's, a, there's a bunch of forum posts on it. And it, it, it is a good game, and it's a shame that I didn't get enough time to, uh, to be able to show it here. Um, but they did pick up the project recently, and there's a new release that brought in a bunch of functionality. The, the author had done a lot of work, um, so I wanted to show that off, but I didn't get a chance to, uh, to learn how, it, how to actually play it. Yeah, this is an X5000 boot screen, so it's got a little animation going. Nah. It's uh, yeah, it's that, and I also have the quiet boot off because I do a lot of beta testing, so I've got it set up for beta testing. So it takes a little bit longer. Sorry, everyone. Most of the other games should be pretty stable. Uh, <laughs> it, the first one is Start Amiga OS, and the next one says Start Classic. So I think Aeon's got plans. So I think that's actually been posted that in the past. So it's, that's public. That they're working on that. Yeah, I think Alice is like a progenitor of that, where you can just boot Classic. I actually have a Classic install. I, we could show it later. It actually runs very nicely. So, sorry it took so long to get back here. So I'll run my e-game launcher, choose Amy West again. This game is super funky. I actually figured out how to play it, and it was, it was pretty fun. Um, so, it's called Coles. You choose uh, your... you can play with the joystick and all of that. I, I read the storyline. Um, apparently, this this creature that's got fire coming out of its behind um, is a human in a future world, and uh, been condensed into a a single ball type structure because the uh, Earth has been under attack by the 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 red ball. That's how you die, by the way, um, by the red balls, and so. Brave humans have go undergone a process where they um, where they uh, were able to enter the world of these uh, invaders to be able to attack them. So it's based on physics. They're drawn to you. I'm using the keyboard and the arrow keys to try to draw them so I can get them to knock into the, the wall there to destroy them. So you try. It's it's kind of like billiards in some bizarre way. But you're trying to get the red ball into the, just to hit the edge. Oh, or drive into the edge yourself. Okay, here he comes. So you have to like position yourself appropriately so when he bounces off, he hits the edge. So as you try to lure him to the side and let him get close and then nail him. It's actually very difficult. I haven't tried this yet. We, we, maybe we can do it a little bit later. You can actually do a four player version of this. So you can have four people on the keyboard all playing at the same time. I think it's probably more fun to watch and to do when you've got four people uh, going after it. There it goes. It's an impressive amount of backstory, actually. I think it's a Linux port as well. The green means something. I forget what it is. I don't know if I have to end it with the green, but you'll notice at the bottom of the screen there's like yellow. 
and it's got the points. Um, and then uh, it's got the different colors. Those are the other players. I believe it also has network play. So that would have been something interesting to try, is to get a network version of this going with the other OS uh, 4 systems that are here. Yeah, it's in the dock. Something about the colors is, one of the colors is like good for you, like gives you another life or something. So, it takes a while to get the, uh, get it under control. Oop! And anyway, I'll stop this pretty soon. Once you get the hang of this thing, it is actually kind of fun. Okay, we'll stop. A uh, bunch of options you can play online. Let's see. Next. Um, this is a uh, Linux version of a very popular Amiga game um, that does also have network play. So maybe next year we'll do more network play. Uh, we'll just start on the first one. Looks kind of familiar. It's Lemmings. So it's an, a, a version of Lemmings re-implemented effectively for Linux. Oh, and my machine locked in. Shoot. Sorry, everyone. Next year it'll be super smooth, promise. <laughs> and uh, but it has network play, so you can do. A couple years ago, we had uh, Bryce uh, Nesbit, um, who was one of the Amiga developers, come in and he's like, "I want to try two-player Lemmings," and I had never heard of two-player Lemmings. I mean, I guess I I didn't uh, have another mouse or whatever. So when he came, we actually booted the video, the Amiga 2000 with the Christmas Lemmings with two mice, and it shows up with the two-player options, and you can actually play against other people. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Playing two-player Lemmings is really good. So this is a, a Linux port that allows you to do two-player Lemmings. Ported back to the Amiga to play. It's got all the options where you can... Um, um, it's got all the options that you can do around... Um, uh, the blockers that you can, I think there's a level maker for people as well. So it seems like a pretty uh, good project to have. Okay. Sorry, it's taking so long. If I knew it was going to reboot, I would unplug the DVD drive and turned off the quiet stuff and try to speed it up. Once it gets to this part, it loads pretty fast. Do you have it on an SSD? Yeah, I have an Intel SSD in there. Highly recommend that. With the Steve's driver. Okay, we're back. Okay. Uh-oh, sorry, no mouse. It's beta. It's coming. Okay. Which ISO version do you have? Uh, Are you still on 18? Something like that. It's it's a little more handcrafted. Which one is this one? So this is called Cool. Oh, it's the same one. Yeah, we did this one. Sorry. I hope I had it wrong. Yeah, we did Cool. It was Nikki Bomb. I think this one does run. This is a, um, uh, maybe it's two that runs. Uh-oh. It's mad at me. Let me go this way. There's a reason why I use the e-game tool. It's because I have a few games on the system. Nikki, where'd it go? Uh-oh. That's crazy. You set everything up, you test it. <laughs> it doesn't work when you get to actually doing it. What does that do? Maybe it's not right. Original DOS files. Oh. I thought it worked. Worked only once. Okay. Anyway, sorry guys, I didn't do that. I spent a lot of time on the AV stuff this year, and less time on the game preparation. Hopefully I get a pass. Oh. And the engines did something bad. Shoot! Okay. 
Oh man, this is annoying. Whoops. Let's keep running. I'm being interviewed by LD to fill the space. <laughs> I know, I know. I, again, I apologize. I, I'm usually on the ball with this, but it's been very busy at work. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting process. So during the course of the year, when new games become available on OS4 Depot and other places, um, I, I install them, and then I go to eGame, and I tag them so that I just collect them. And then usually what I'll do is, as AmiWest gets closer, I'll go back through OS4 Depot and AmiNet, and Eminet has a search functionality, so you can actually search for every submission to the games category for the last year, uh, and that's what I did. And so I looked through the stuff that were not necessarily updates, but relatively new things. So, um, we, w w what's tending to be happening, and it has been happening, is we're getting a lot of ports um, from other systems. I'm actually fairly hopeful that with the work that Hans has done for us with the um, uh, Warp Nova 3D. We'll see another big push for ports uh, and a lot more of the 3D games that are out there. Um, there's a couple of prolific gamers. Hano uh, has done a ton of stuff for us, but he hasn't done stuff recently. Most of what he did was for Alchemy last year. That's just working on EGL. Not on the updated, uh, on which one? He's working on EGL, on EGL Rapper. Oh, the EGL Rapper, yeah. So he can port more games. Yeah, he's got like tons of things he wants to port after. Yeah. Yeah, so he's like, he's waiting to get that done, and then it's going to drop a million boards. Yeah. And he's been doing, he does great work. He wrote the Boosty Library, the, the joystick stuff. Um, his games are really, really quite good. good. For us to have as a platform, to have more interest. The more software we have, the better we all are. Um, so we've been seeing that. What, what was interesting is we have been seeing more of the Amiga OS uh, native development. So even ADOM that I showed at first was a port. It came from somewhere else. Uh, what I'll show this time is Tunnel and Trolls. So, um, a little history. Um, one of my other hobbies is um, Dungeons and Dragons. Shouldn't say that publicly. And um, the 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 first thing that came out was this thing called Tunnels and Trolls. So it's an entire rule set, and the developer implemented the entire rule set, James Jacobs, uh, for Amiga. Um, and this is also 68K as an Amiga game. So he's actually taken all of the Tunnels and Trolls published modules. So this is not the completely generated ADOM. This is like the, the uh, um, published modules that are out there. Uh, it's still kind of going, but he took the old stuff and has coded it into his system. And what's interesting about this one, it's, it's somewhat similar to the... Um, uh, let's see, what's a good one here? It's somewhat similar to ADOM, except for this one is a little bit more integrated into Amiga OS. So it actually uses, uh, let's do Thorn Rip Snort. Uh, notice that Thorn's uh, character sheet just popped up as a reaction or Boopsy uh, user interface. So it's, it's, it's sort of a blend of a visual game on one side, but it's also got the text elements on the other. So let's see, uh, we're in the city, we, we're, uh, it, well, it's a D&D it's a &D game, so we have a broadsword over here, we don't have any spells yet, uh, let's see, which spell, we don't have any, uh, armor, uh, none, whatever, cast spell, quit, bank hands, use item, play. So here's all, a list of all of the, um, the stuff. So we'll go to uh, the Buffalo Castle, which is BC. And there's like a little um, graphic that popped up. So as I said, it's sort of an encoding of that adventure with the graphics that come up and this uh, character sheet that's usable here. Um, solo, the first solo adventure. If you know how to do it, you may go right in, which is what we'll do. Uh, before you enter, you, I have a special uh, kit to sell you. Let's see, do we have any gold? We have no money, so that's not going to go very well. Um, 
Let's see. The center door is 99, the left door is 54, and the right door is 74. So, any thoughts? Center, left, or right? Center. Center, 99. Uh, okay, so we, apparently we came into a room. Oh, a teleport door. Roll two dice to see where we are teleported. Uh, you roll two dice, your total is five. You're going to paragraph 47. Watch out. <laughs> so I think we can type V to view. Uh, that must be the character sheet. So let's do C to continue. Um, it tells us how long, we've entered room six. There's a large fountain in the middle of the room. You may drink from it. Oh yeah, let's do that, we're thirsty. Uh, oh yes, sorry. We're going to paragraph 24. Uh, did we die? No. What does the, you lost IQ. Okay, okay. What are these paragraphs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. No, there is a paper module that has a paragraph 47 that says that. Okay. <laughs> he encoded all of this into the system. So it's like ADOM, except for it's the actual modules, so you can play it by yourself. So you don't need to have like a, a dungeon master to play it with you. Very cool. We're now going back to paragraph 47, apparently. We are entered six. Uh, let's see. Let's leave by the north door. Ooh, monster. That does not look like it's going to end well. Uh, a wandering monster table. <laughs> uh, you roll a two, total is 11. 11 is a troll monster, rating 24. Run away or fight? Uh, let, let's run away. Let's see. Two minutes of the lap. We got hit. Uh, you're fighting. Okay, I think we're actually kind of dead. Let's see, fight. Um, do we have any uh, hit points left? Level one, AP, strength. Anyway, it's it's a it. What I liked about this is it. The author is still continuing to work on the game. It's got this interesting mixture of Amiga OS classes to do the data organization, uh, and it also has the Incident 15 graphic. <laughs> so it has like this little graphics window. So as you do stuff, you interact with it. Um, if I go back, just to just to reiterate this, um, play, you'll see a list of the, these are all of the modules that he's spent the time to copy all the text, put in the graphics, and do all the, the work with. So here's like uh, level three, any wizard, all that kind of stuff. So hats off to uh, James Jacob um, for working on, on this particular uh, software. So I want to spend some more time with in the future, and it's uh, like totally system uh, system friendly. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, close shell. Anyway, uh, let's go back here. And then now for a little bit more fun, I have two versions of this game. This is Wings. So we're, we're called that Wings was going to be coming out. It's not released, but these are the demos, so I thought I would show it. They have a limited number for sale. You can still go to the website and purchase them. There's two versions that we could play, either the compositing version or the Warp 3D version. I'm going to do compositing just randomly. Um, it does want to take us to another screen. Uh, it's very well written. The, it's updated graphics, as you can see, very smooth, but it's also uh, very true to the original game. And so the demo has a couple of different modes. It's a little buggy. It's been out for quite a while now. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a pilot. Uh, we'll put all of our points in the flying. And then we're going to do the training. It's, this part's a little weird. I don't know... Um, like where to click to make it actually work. Maybe I got to do join squadron. There it goes. Um, and I'm going to go fairly fast to this part. So we move on. So it's got very similar to the original game, very similar we're look and feel. Um, story is obviously very, very important to the game. Um, it's got all the text animations about where you arrived. Has anyone here actually played Wings and read all the text? It's like, it's pretty hardcore. I mean, it is the journal of a 
uh, fighter pilot in World War One. It is not good in the middle. <laughs> it's very bad times. Hats off for making the game like a movie that's got that emotional aspect to it. Um, you know, my partner and I took off into a ghostly sunrise, and uh, the gnawing in my gut told me we'd soon find the Hun. Sure enough, after uh, a nagging lull, we found a pair of worthy opponents below us. That they were close enough for us to touch. It, it's a little, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, disconnected from the game itself, because this is a demo. So it just cycles through a couple of the game modes. This is the bombing mode. Uh, it's very smooth to play. And this is the compositing version. So this is not a 3D, this is not Warp 3D. This is using the composite engine. Um, the game is still under development and hopefully will be out pretty soon. I can drop a bomb if I press the right button on the keyboard. Oh, I can shoot the machine gun. So there it is. Probably B, right? Okay. So that ends and it does an interstitial because it's a demo. So we can continue and then we can get into the next mode. I'm going to go fairly fast. We don't have to read this all. But now we're into the next page. Clouds opened up. And this is the uh, striping version of it. So we can actually uh, shoot things. There's full sound. Oh, let's, let's shoot that. That looks fun. Woohoo! I killed something today. Uh, you can see the performance is quite nice on the X5000 uh, here. But obviously, he's got some work to do on the physics. There's going to be people running around shooting back at you, just like the regular wings. Um, they said it was going to be out a couple of months ago. They missed that uh, deadline. Uh, I'm sure they're working on it. There are copies for sale. The, if you enjoy using your Amiga, you have to buy stuff. Just give some Amigas someone some money. Um, giving these guys money is good because it's a commercial release. It helps us if, if they if they were able to sell it. And then um, see February 16. It's little it'll be another year. And then the last one that I was able to see was the actual flying one. Um, it's, again, a little bit rough. His head's moving using the the keyboard. Yeah, that's the rough part. I think. Maybe that's maybe that's the issue is the compositing. But for a, for an early preview, they they've done a pretty good job. I don't think the bad people shoot at us in this. Come on, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Let's see if we can crash. That'd be fun, right? Nope. We just turn our head. Anyway, that's Wings. I thought it'd be fun to show that. Hopefully they finish it soon. Uh, it doesn't crash. It's, it's rock solid from that perspective. Uh, clearly the developers are quite good. Um, the last one we have here is uh, Zump. Hopefully that one works too. Uh, the projector can't handle it. The toaster can. The, the device that I use to go to the toaster handles it, no problem. <laughs> but the projector can't handle it. Uh, so I'll just describe it. So I have a little creature, he's running on, oh. It's some uh, puzzle game. Looks like it was done by the Japanese. And there's squares and you can fall off. Sorry. Well, that's why. Oh, yeah, the res is too low. So the, those things will start disappearing. So it's a classic time-wasting puzzle game. What do these do? I don't know. The red ones. Oh, that looks bad. <laughs> okay. No, I can't move them. Oh! Game over. There we go. So that was the, uh, the end of the prepared uh, games demonstration. Let's go ahead and exit. It's been a good year for Amiga games. Um, be nice if we get some more. Obviously, the more X5000s and Tabor sell, uh, the more market that's created, the more games we'll end up having. 
the classic scene is doing quite well. People are working on a lot of AGA content, um, working on uh, OCS and, and other content. I should give a shout out to our friend Cami, who actually was at the Amiga 30th last year. She has posted to, I think, Amiga World, announcing the next Amiga Games Jam. Uh, it's a competition that starts now. Um, actually, we're online. Let me go check it out. Um, Oh, click the button. Um, she uh, she posted a little while ago. I might drift it off the top here, but it's basically uh, an Amiga Games Jam where you create games. They'll be judged at the end of the year, and uh, they'll be judged at the end of the year, and there'll be uh, winners. Um, I, I think it's a great idea to sort of. Uh, push and suggest that we improve on the, the game community, so hats off for, I, I don't know where she's stuck it in here. You, you can find it on the uh, uh, announcement. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> where is announcement? If you go to forums. Ah, ah, I see what you're saying. The announcement form. I can't remember if it's under... This one? No. Yep, that's pretty good. Cool. So, um, hats off to Cami for doing this work. She didn't have to. God bless her. Um, there's a bunch of uh, rules and stuff, and hopefully we'll get some more games out of it to show it to uh, Annie West. So. What are some of the... Uh, we know there's a new base coming. We know that the guys working on 3D games. There's Star 57. There's... There's a few big main ones we know. Yeah, so, so the question is what's coming? What's coming? There is a game called Tower 57. Um, it is done by the original folks who gave us Chaos Engine. It was a Kickstarter project. It was successfully Kickstarted. Um, I was a participant in the Kickstarter. I'm looking forward to getting it. Again, if you have money, give it to people who do stuff in the Amiga community so they continue to do it. Um, the, uh, that's a big one. The guys who do Mace and Wicker, we showed Mace uh, a couple years ago, last year, whatever. Uh, they have announced an updated version of Mace. New graphics, new levels, some uh, gameplay enhancements, which will be very nice. We know that Hano is working on the wrapper because he's uh, gotten backed up in terms of what he wants to be able to deliver. If you go online into the forums on the website, you can typically find these guys, and I'm sure even there he's got a list of what he wants to support. I think on his own... <laughs> Yeah, so this, this is a this is a, a pretty it's a, it's a pretty cool game in the way that it's been put together and designed. Um, the gameplay looks a, a, a lot of fun, and if they they met a a, um, a particular level, they're going to do Amiga version that did get reached, so they are committed to delivering uh, a, a version for Amiga OS. And I'm sure it just gets a lot easier for them. Oh, it locked up again. Gosh darn it! Sorry. Um, so that'll be uh, that'll be coming for us. Okay, thanks everyone. Sorry, was so.